Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jeff Demworth. I'm a co-founder of Vast Data. I am joined today with a very special guest, uh, Edmundo from 442. Hi, Jeff. I'm Edmundo Rotti. I'm Chief Strategy Officer at 442. Thanks for coming by and talking with us today. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much. Okay. So, G42, M42, Core42, there's all these different businesses in healthcare and IT services and artificial intelligence. Maybe you can just kind of help us understand the the overarching business and then specifically what Core42 is as well. Sure. Uh, G42 as a group is all defined around bringing AI uh, to the world, right? And the way that we do it, uh, we do by enabling our different areas of expertise in getting access to AI. So what it means, it means that, for instance, companies like Core42, which is a, re a recent merge of different companies from, uh, from G42, Core42 is the foundational platform for everything that we do on AI with our different, uh, different companies. So Core42 provides a platform, provides access to AI in multiple forms, and it does provide as well AI expertise that is then leveraged by the other companies like M42 that is specialized in healthcare, bionat, in science, and, and so on. So this is, uh, I would say, yeah, many companies, but with a clear strategy and an execution path to deliver AI into these different uh, uh, segments. Okay, thank you. So we're here at Jitex. The the theme of the, the conference this year is AI everything. So. You know, you can see people that are selling speakers down the hall and they're advertised as AI speakers or whatever. I think when, when Corp 42 talks about AI, it's an entirely different level of play than when most people in the IT industry speak of AI. So maybe you could just talk about the scale and the ambition of your AI efforts. Yeah, so uh, I was mentioning the fact that G42 is organized with the companies that have domain expertise in order to deliver AI in those domains. And uh, as you said, when we speak about AI, I mean, in 2023, you just mention AI and you put it on everything, even even on, on the chair and, and you claim it's AI enabled. <laughs> so in um, in this case, the idea is that once we, let's say Core42 is focused on two aspects, right? On one side, we have an infrastructure play, uh, right? And we have announced the counter platform and, and other things. On the other side, we do have, uh, through our cooperation with what what was the former inception and the uh, IIAI Institute, we have expertise in developing and deploying uh, models, for instance. We have uh, developed uh, uh, the JACE, which is the first large language model built uh, on uh, natively uh, Arabic content, content uh, Arabic datasets. Uh, what we do then on top of this is also then to enable these companies, let's say M42, the healthcare, right? So we work with them who are the domain experts who have access to the data for healthcare, and we make sure that they can build on top of their data sets and their expertise, they can build solutions that are AI enabled, right? And we know uh, how relevant AI is in certain areas. And so healthcare is one of these from precision medicine uh, to proteomic research and so on. So uh, we have both, we have the enabling uh, layer and we have the domain expertise on top. So that's why I would say our AI approach is not fuzzy. <laughs> it is not yeah. just all around everything. We are very focused. We have uh, our verticals where we want to make sure that ultimately um, the end users, uh, wherever they are, if it's a patient or, or uh, a user in the industry, can really experience the benefits of AI. So Core42 is the principal infrastructure platform for a lot of this AI work. I would say infrastructure and the related AI support services, because you need to have AI expertise that then you use to serve those domains where you have the domain expertise, right? Oh, I get that. I'm just a supercomputer junkie, so <laughs> okay. I'm taking you down a path here. So, so, the, so it's the infrastructure platform. Some of these systems are really large. So maybe you could talk a little bit about Condor Galaxy and the type sure. of investments that you're making and the scale of computing that you're you're trying to achieve here. Sure. Uh, looking at looking at the different technologies available on the market, obviously, our um, companies specialize in different areas. They are also our first users, right? So we had to enable them 
in order for them to be able to trade their models, for instance, and, and to be able to really deploy, build AI solutions. And in order to do that, we looked at multiple technologies in the market. One of the technologies that we have selected is actually the Cerebras technology, that is a very innovative technology design to deliver training at scale. The way it's set up, it allows us to scale any sides of training in theoretically indefinitely, right? So we can scale linearly as much as we want because it does use a completely different approach uh, to trading. This enabled us, for instance, to train Js uh, in a few months, right? And uh, the way that we have uh, developed that, so we are going to install tens of, th tens of exaflops of AI capacity. And when I'm saying exaflops, I refer to FP16, just to be clear with the supercomputing guys that yeah, speak yeah. FP64. Um, and we have already four exaflops uh, deployed. We are going to increase uh, those, um, those exaflops. And then we are, op we are opening up multiple locations in multiple countries all over the world. We have started with the deployment in the US. We are going to have multiple deployments uh, across the world. As I said, the idea is to develop tens of exaflops in order to make sure that we can serve the, the capacity needs when it comes specifically to training uh, of our users, but also all, uh, and also in relation to all the other users we are going to uh, partner with. So, speaking of these systems, they're not all in uh, in UAE. They're not all in even the Middle East. You're starting to deploy on a global basis of a global scale. Is that right? Uh, that's correct. The, the first deployment for uh, the Condor platform is actually in the U.S. Um, and this is also because we are focused on time to market. We all know how difficult it is for instance to get uh, GPUs uh, from the market. Our users, they need to deliver their results now. They cannot wait six or nine months or a year before delivering their results. So we wanted to be time to market efficient. And so we started deploying in the U.S. Okay. Um, and that's, that's also going to be our strategy in general. So we definitely have to have a focus here in the UE. I mean, for multiple reasons, we have an interest in the, in deploying here in the UE. But that solution was ready to go in a very, very short time frame. And so we leveraged it. It's cool. Okay, so a global platform, tens of eggs of flops. Starting to wonder when Zeta flops creeps into these. Uh, in the AI world pretty soon. We do like uh, FP4, maybe you get there really quickly. Or <laughs> yes. Um, and, and so you, you've got these, these gloriously large systems you're deploying, um, you know, these, these trading jobs and these inference operations, they require a little data, would you say? Oh yeah. Just, uh, yeah, I would say quite some data, but more than, so yeah, here is the point. So one of the key challenges when you build all those systems, I, I'm raising the ball for you now. Thank you. So, uh, one of the key challenges here is that you need to have you need to have access to the data when you need it, right? You need to make sure that you have those data available. If you look at these platforms like the Cerebras, but in general, also GPU-based platforms, uh, the, the limitation is not in the compute power you have, but how quickly you can seed uh, that compute power. And so that's why we have been starting speaking to you. Uh, to you. Uh, okay, so so you're, you're, you're turning the interview, and now you're and well, I mean, that, that. Uh, I, you you can better explain, I think, why uh, we have been looking at VAS uh, as a technology particularly promising for the AI uh, world, and particularly with large scale deployment. Yeah, you know, Niels here, and um, and he was the first person that introduced me to this term. I don't know who came up with it within Core Forty Two, but the term AI Lake was uh, introduced to me the first time I actually met the Core 42 team, and I thought it was just a perfect way to describe the Core 42 data strategy, where you have all these different systems that kind of plug into one central, very high-performance, scalable, resilient information system. And maybe you can just speak a little bit about how you think about data infrastructure as it relates to compute infrastructures. Basically, when, when you have these, these big workloads, what you have to provide is very fast, reading speed into, into these systems. You have to feed them at a very high rate uh, in parallel. Um, and uh, the, in terms of uh, throughput performance that you need, the numbers are impressive. I mean, you're talking about tens, hundreds of gigabytes per second that you need to transfer and make in order to make sure that these systems can, uh, can really uh, exploit the, the compute power you have. Um, so having uh, a layer of fast storage 
fast and scalable storage is mandatory. This is not new in the sense that this is uh, this comes out of the HPC experience as well. Yeah. Right. So that that was a problem uh, uh, always present uh, as soon as the compute power was growing up and. Uh, the problem that, that historically we have been facing has been that you have a lot of compute power and then you need two things. You need fabric, fast fabric, and fast storage. But how do you build a storage that is fast and scalable and support also the protocols that are needed in this work? That's, that's where the investigation uh, started, started from. Okay, so you ended up Selecting BAS, thank you so much for uh, for partnering with us on this project. Um, you're talking about petabytes to hundreds of petabytes of data that's uh, that's really being aimed at the platform. Security is also probably a pretty thorny topic, given that you're managing, you know, just take uh, M42, you've got some of the most sensitive data in all of the UAE, and that's just one country we're talking about, right? How do you think about zero trust in this environment? Well, that was one, one of the other... Uh, things we looked at, you know. So uh, talking about protocol supported, uh, one of the issues that you have with the scalable parallel storage that you had in the previous technology in in HPC is that they were not designed for that, right? Yeah, they were not designed with uh, security in mind. I mean, HPC by definition has always been has always been highly unsecure. Right, right, right. Where in the AI world, you want to build something that is also enterprise grade, and and that's where the combination that Boss provided with performance and enterprise features like zero trust um i attracted the attention yeah okay so um so we're on a journey and uh we're we're working to kind of evolve our our platform to to essentially be much more capable and and, and intelligent about the data that's inside of it than than what you would typically expect from like a, just a standard storage product well so we look at we look at data uh, at the entire data life cycle, yeah. right? So we have to make sure that we have the data accessible when we need it. We, ne we need to make sure that the data is also stored for the long term, is stored, uh, I mean, in different ways uh, so that we can serve all the different uh, moments of, of the data life cycle. So that's, that's where we are heading to. And in order to do that, Let's say there are several several approaches, and the data management as well is going to have an increasing relevance going forward in in making data management more sophisticated, so that we can optimize the locality of the data and remove as much as we can uh, uh, the data gravity issues that we face today. Okay, so so that's where technologies like the vast data space come into play, and we'll be talking about that in just a little bit. Um, Okay, so 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 now we got a good sense of, of how Vast works with Core Forty Two. Uh, maybe share a little bit about what's next for you all and some of your uh, your your big ambitions to take over the world. Or <laughs> well, let's say we want to make sure that we that we deliver on AI. So expanding our capacity, making sure that our cloud platform can enable the most efficient AI from a, from an infrastructure perspective. We need to make sure that our infrastructure is performance efficient and cost efficient. Uh, these two elements obviously are very complex. We are looking at, uh, uh, in particular when it comes to compute and in particular when it comes to AI training, inferencing, there is now the gold rush to the ideal silicon that, that can bring the best uh, AI performance. We are looking at it uh, also from a, uh, an energy uh, consumption perspective. Because, uh, as you know, this, this, this AI infrastructure requires massive uh, infrastructure with massive, um, massive power consumption. Uh, so we are, we are working in optimizing all, the, all, the, all those areas. And uh, a big focus will be, uh, for sure, on, uh, on the data management issues as we grow up and our customers are going to require us uh, more sophisticated solutions uh, to manage, as I said, the entire data lifecycle even the long-term retention um, and also the possibility to recall back the data in an efficient way um, and, and so on. So these are, these are our main areas in that, in that sense. And in order to achieve that, uh, let's say our AI development um, arm and our AI professional services are going to help us because working with the users, we can better understand 
what are the challenges that our users are facing. So leaner, more efficient, much stronger in the future. Yes, I think, and, and, and global. And global. Okay, well, um, I would say on behalf of the entire Bass company, um, being selected to work with you was, was one of the, the real biggest achievements in the company's history. And I just want to let you know how much we're appreciative of this partnership and how much we're working hard to make you leaner and bigger, more global, faster. We'll do everything we can to make you all successful. And I just wanted to say thank you. And uh, thank you. And uh, thank you to you as well, because the, uh, it has to be, this is a journey, right? This, these new challenges on the data uh, need, need to be addressed and having a partnership and not just a customer, um, a customer relationship is exactly what we need in order to shape the product in a way that works uh, best for this entire world. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.